Hey guys, I'm back. I'm outside and it, it is a gorgeous day. I don't know. Polar vortex, I guess, gave up and went home, right? But most importantly, forget the weather. I have right here a package that I know is going to make a lot of people very happy. And yes, feel free to laugh at that one right there. As soon as the guys from Demolition Ranch announced that they uh, were now selling knives, I was just flooded with requests to check out this knife company. So I have here four knives from Skiff Knives USA. Um, and we're gonna, well, we're gonna talk about the company. We're gonna talk about some of the designs. We're gonna look at four of them right here, right now. Um, to do the unboxing today, I'm using the only hinderer I can even find. Uh, sadly, I lost, I lost several hinderers in the move. And these are, if you know your knives, Hinderers are some of the best um, non-customs that you can get, uh, and I don't know where they are, uh, but this one I still have. It's a Hinderer uh, Tad XM18 Warncliffe, kind of an older generation compared to what they're coming out with now, but there's a reason I'm using this knife. I want you to look at this knife. There's a reason I'm using this knife for the unboxing here today, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So, ooh, so let's see what we've got here. Now, on my Facebook page, I had done a poll as to which knives you guys would like to see. And I went with those results. Uh, unfortunately, what I, one of them I really want to take a look at, that I really wanted to show you guys, was the Lunkers TV. You know, the signature knife. Um, for a few different reasons. They were out of stock. So I actually delayed my order for a little bit, waiting to see if that would come back in stock. But it wasn't. So I just went with these ones. And we'll take a look at them. So which ones do I actually have? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, we're going to open these knives. Let's talk about Skiff Knives, though, real quick. So Demolition Ranch is an amazing channel. I love it. My channel will never be as big or as cool as Demolition Ranch. You know, there's no question about it. Um, Skiff Knives is a company that has been operating for years and years and years in the Ukraine, though. So I just want to, you know, I want to help do the education thing here a little bit. They did not start this company. They did not invent the company. Um, they were given the opportunity to buy into Skiff Knives, which was which already existed. Skiff is, you know, this company, you know, there's a Skiff model company out of out of the Ukraine. Um, there's some other, this is a common Russian name of, of company, Skiff. It was a Ukrainian company, um, and if you just check out Skiff Knives without looking for the UA, the US, sorry, you'll find skiff.ua or something like that. And they actually have a lot more options and a lot more designs on the original Ukrainian website than what's available on the Skiff US. Um, just as an FYI, I looked. Um, some of the knives that are available from Skiff Knives USA are exactly available. Who took a little hologram? Are exactly available on the uh, original Skiff Ukrainian website. So when people originally said, "Hey, can you check out Skiff knives?" I did a search for Skiff knives, and that's what I found. Um, until I found out that you have to very specifically look for like Skiff.us or whatever it is. Um, and you know, I'll I'll put a link to the actual, I'll put a link to each one in the video description so you can check out the difference. So they were given an opportunity um, to buy into, to, to kind of bring the Skiff Knives, the Ukrainian company, to the US. And that's what this is. I also have to say I have huge respect um, because there was, whether if you know this or not, there's a big controversy when the, the website first um, launched because there was, um, well, some issues, a lot of people brought up that, like, they're way overcharging for the, the knives and the materials they're delivering. You know, Matt from Demolition Ranch put up a video on, on one of his other channels, Off the Ranch, and rather than playing some BS game of, well, here's why, he just flat out said, he said, um, he very humbly said, guys, I apologize. I know my guns really well. I don't know my knives really well. I'm just, I was so excited to be part of a knife company. Um, and this is what people said I could charge. So I did. Um, and after looking at all your comments, I get it. So he cut all the prices in half. 
all of them in half um and 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 just basically said i'm sorry i'm not trying to rip you guys off and if this is you know you guys are knife guys and if this is how it goes then this is how it goes so much huge respect to them in terms of that that was really awesome do you guys want to see the the four models that you all picked out it would have been five if the lunkers was in stock we're going to look at the lunkers just the the pictures though because i want to i want to compare it a little bit um, so the ones we're going to look at now does it have the model names on here? No, it doesn't so let's take a look at what we've got So I like the packaging. It's pretty cool. I don't know what the original skiff packaging looks like got magnetic boxes here Yep magnetic boxes and inside. Oh nice. So we've got the skiff adventure. I Don't know what the series 424 means um, but oh Well, that's pretty awesome. Uh, look at all the specs right there. It looks like all we're missing is why is that all a millimeter? So unfortunately, I you know what? I will put the measurements in inches and stuff because I guess this was already pre-printed out. Um, but so we've got the adventure to look at. Uh, what is in there? Oh, little dog tag. So we'll be looking at the adventure. There's one. We will be looking at the defender. That was highly voted on. We will be looking at the sturdy. Now, this was not voted on, um, but here's why I picked this one. We uh, look, are looking at some of their more expensive uh, knives. This is their cheapest knife that they have online. So I also wanted to take a look at the, you know, the least expensive one they had to offer as we're looking at everything else, too. And then, also looking at one of their fixed blades, we are looking at the Aggressor. They have two fixed blades, the Killer Whale and the Aggressor, and really the only difference is the blade grind. Um, so we'll be looking at all four of these knives today. I think right here we're going to start with the, what is this? We're going to start with the Defender. The Defender got a lot of votes, a lot of requests. So inside the box, you get a nice little skiff sticker. Nice padding. But do not eat. Uh, is this a skiff dog tag? Skiff Knives USA Dog Tag. We'll get that in each box. So we'll know that. We won't have to, you know, take it out. It's heavy. God we trust. Okay. So nice packaging. And I'm always a fan of that. Now, this is one of the ones that I have some concerns about. And here's why. Well, let's get it out of the package. So we have a nice G10 scale, nice pattern. Um, flipper design, nice flow through, bead blast, uh, I believe steel over travel stop there and everything. Fit and finish looks great actually, it really does. But here's where things get a little bit sketchy. And again, so when you're not knife guys, maybe you don't notice stuff like this. Take a look at this and then take a look at a hinderer, which has been around for years. And do you notice any oh, striking similarities? First of all, this is a hinderer proprietary clip. He, he invented this clip. This clip is, is his baby. Here it is. Um, now this one's not inset, but the hinderer, um, lock stop the hinder lock stop now it's under the clip on this he, he this is like that was one of his patented devices and other people started using it there you go take a look at your pivot mm -hmm. and uh now this one's not as bad as the Lunkers. I'm gonna to have to show you a picture of the Lunkers. I really wanted to show the Lunkers, but uh, there is a lot of hinderer, we'll say borrowed, in the overall design of this knife, even so far as the pattern on this. Now, there is a company called Monkey Edge that has um, a proprietary scale for the hinderer series called the Monkey Edge Frag Pattern. Let me show you a picture. Yeah, and that's why I got this specific one um, to show you. 
even the general, if you look at the placement of the lanyard hole on any hinderer knife, whether it's a genuine hinderer or a hinderer collaboration um, with uh, Gerber or Kershaw or whatever, um, very, very similar. Now, again, we're dealing with guys who admittedly are not knife guys. That's not the kind of stuff that jumps right out at them. Um, probably. It jumped right out to me. Now, before we even go on and look at this knife, I, since I couldn't get my hands on Lunker's TV, you know, signature one, let's let me let me show you a picture of the Lunker's TV version, and you know, see that because that is honestly the most striking, sim strikingly similar one. If you look, it's it's got not only the hinderer clip, it's got the actual cutout where you would reverse it left and right. I mean, it's got, it, if you take a look, it's it's very similar in terms of the shape, the design. Um, now the blade is obviously different. Hinderers come with um, several different blade styles that you can get. That blade is not a hinderer type blade, but I mean, there's a lot of the hinderer design that goes into that one. I don't know if they knew that going into it. And this is not a normal hinderer scale. Um, this is, you know, the uh, triple lot design specific scale that you're only going to find on the Hinderer TAD collaborations. Now, a Hinderer is, you know, depending on the model you get, it's it's a 400 to, you know, $500 knife. I'm sure there's some folks saying, I'll fuck that, if this is Hinderer-esque, and it's, you know, in the $40 range, you know, that's all good to go. I'm just, I'm just pointing out the similarities there. That's And it's one of those things where is it, a, you know, obviously it's not a counterfeit, but... This is like a signature stuff of the designer. So I'm just pointing it out because there are some people that are going to look at this and say like, oh, damn, you guys copied that. Well, number one, once again, you know, they didn't start this company. They bought into this company. And these designs are actually available on the original Skiff website. Um, and number two, the truth is, I don't, th I don't think they know. I just, I don't think they know that this is like a hinderer knife. This design has been around and has been like considered one of the top high-end, um, it's not really a mid-tech, it's a production knife, but they're all hand-assembled and stuff. Um, but I just, I just don't think they know that. Um, and you know, while we're at it, if we take a look at the Adventure, which also, I, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll do the whole unboxing on this, but this one too has a lot of the same features on there. Um, so anyway. I just want, I just, I felt like I had to get that out there, that it, there's, there's a little bit of sketch involved in the original, you know, company, um, knives produced in China, what can I say, hinders all made in the USA, in Ohio, but whatever, okay, so that's the end of the spiel there, so lots of different options available online, weight is actually pretty good, I like it, I like it a lot, um, we looked at the fit and finish, fit and finish is pretty good overall, um, this is a stainless steel clip, the original Hinderer clip is titanium. You can get a titanium clip if you want and do all sorts of cool anno. They come anodized and everything too if you want. Um, this frag pattern scale is actually though, like I can tell you from using the, the actual Hinderer one, it's really grippy. Like whether it's wet, whether it's um, you're in gloves or whatever, this is a great outdoor type pattern to have. So right hand tip up works fine for me. Very little soup for anybody else that wants anything else. You can already see like a really beautiful stone wash on the blade there. Uh, I guess we should just open this guy up, right? Wow. That's very well balanced, but more importantly, the action on that was awesome. Now you can... You can look in here. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. You can look. Um, no bearings or anything. Just looks like phosphor bronze washers. Excellent action, though. Um, not super slick like it's flying away, but very smooth controlled Let's see so push button nice light switch either way beautiful stone wash actually gorgeous stone wash on it um, and the grind super aggressive so I would have to say that for your oh it has serial number on it too that's really cool they're serialized damn it the light the way the light is it's kind of late in the afternoon i don't know can you catch a serial number 
I didn't realize they were serialized on there too. That's awesome. Nice wide belly with that sweet recurve. You know, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I'm kind of upset at the, the hinderer elements in it because it actually is, you know, like standing on its own legs though, on its own two feet, very comfortable. Um, fits in your hand great actually. So this big choil right here um, and this, the way that the jimping and the thumb ramp goes up, these two fingers lock in perfectly and like you could hold it just like that with the weight and balance it is perfect um, and then the rest of it just fits in your hand great the hinderer clip is designed so it doesn't really bite in your hand at all it holds really securely unfortunately it's not deep carry at all but it holds really securely into your hand this is a wonderfully like comfortable knife to hold on to right here um, and big hands cool good to go very very nice the flipper once it's open gives you that little bit of a finger guard for the blade but it's not obtrusive um, and now if we're talking about in terms of looks too, I mean, let's face it, functionality is first and foremost, but you want a knife that looks cool? Looks pretty damn cool. Fits nicely, reverse grip, or standard. You've got a, like a really nice thick piece of steel that thins up nicely with the swedge up top. Um, the grind on the blade is, is great, helps keep it light, and like I said, really well balanced actually, really, really well balanced. I really enjoy this like it just feels good in your hand like if you had to do a lot of cutting tasks out in the field or just you know workshop related stuff it's the kind of knife that doesn't feel like it's gonna get really fatiguing to use and that jimping up there really well placed small thumb ramp but really well placed jimping um, just the right size not too aggressive but it works now, uh, we'll do blade tests all together later on. We're just gonna do like, you know, general impressions. Um, it's it's almost like, it's kind of like the perfect size. If it was any skinnier, it would be a little too skinny to hold on to, but the way it is, just kind of perfect. Excellent, I, I, I like it, I like it a lot. So let's put this guy down there. And now let's move on to the adventure. Really aggressive patterning on the adventure scale there g10 again um, that's not going anywhere in your hand kind of you know same elements we looked at slightly different shape but same you know pivot clip all that overstop you know things like that uh, anyway same bead blast finish on the uh, on the frame side same flow through with barrel spacers centering also perfect on this fit and finish again looks great uh really like i mean really like the finishing and texturing on that g10 and you know it's just od green but it's just a, it's a really nice look to it reviewed everything else that i would look at on this with that guy let's just open it that's pretty nice uh, it's a little sticky closing but i think it'll break in Oh, you know what that is? That's the detent getting back over onto the blade. That's what that is. Um, so. so, light switch. Nice. More of a, con a bleh, more of a conventional blade for you there. Um, push button. Yes. And again, no bearings. Um, just regular old bronze washers, which helps keep the price down, I guess. Um, same thing with the jimping. They take the jimping a little bit farther back on the spine on this one, on the handle, um, but still short thumb ramp, but great jimping in there. Nice big choil though, if you wanted to choke up on this guy right here. And it doesn't uh, cut into your finger at all, but also well balanced. A um, little bit heavier, a little bit heavier here, but still, um, that's a great, another great slicing blade. One thing I did notice though with both of these, um, giving a full and honest evaluation here, a uh, little bit could be easier getting your, your thumb onto the lock, maybe a little bit of jimping, maybe uh, 
uh, just grind that scale back just a tiny bit, you know, a little grind into the frame, either one. I understand why you might not want to grind the scale back a little bit because you wouldn't want to activate that lock by accident, but I, mean, I love flippers, but I love thumb studs. Nice. Um, feels really good though. Again, well balanced. Uh, I think I'm um, leaning more if I had to pick one over the other. This guy's winning. This one also, they're both very light. Um, I really like the long straight edge on, you know, just nice cutting surface on the blade there. And this one is serialized too. Cool. Both of them very slim though. So in your pocket, not taking up a whole lot of room. Now, if you're interested, because they take hinderer clips, you can find on eBay very easily uh, replacement hinderer style deep carry clips that you could put on these uh, for your deep carry options. You guys might notice a little lighting change. Um, had to plug the camera in. Uh, moving on, <clears throat> next one we're going to take a quick look at is the Skiff Sturdy. So, well, isn't that fantastic then? All right, so, <laughs> cool. As I had said in the beginning, I picked the Sturdy um, because it is the, the lowest, I won't say the lowest end, but it's the lowest priced knife on the website and I wanted to compare it to the other ones. So again, we gray G10, nice grippy pattern. Steel frame lock, all these knives frame locks, all of them. Um, this one does have a very nice deep carry clip. Nice flow through design again. Um, same bead blast finish. This time I uh, decided to go with the satin finish on the blade just to check out how they do the satin finish. Centering again is perfect. A little bit of weight to this one. Now because of the difference in price, I was thinking it might be a smaller knife. You know, I wasn't I wasn't really looking at dimensions or anything. Um, when What is it, Tato? Boof! Boof! Okay. I wasn't really looking at dimensions or whatever when I ordered them. I was more looking at the materials and, you know, blade shapes and designs and grinds and stuff like that. Um, so, hmm, all right, first one that we've had a little problem with, but I mean, I won't even say problem. Let's just let it break in a bit. There we go. I like this lock a lot better than the other ones. Um, it's got some jimping there to really let your thumb bite into. Serialized again. Very nice finish though, with the grind lines on the satin finish there. And then, light switch, pretty good. Um, it's about as, as thin as the others, and again, very comfortable to hold. Great jimping placement up on the blade. Um, simple design, but comfortable. Um, Nice sculpting on the G10. Breaks in very quickly. We haven't looked at lockup on any of these yet, and we will do that next. But, and then finally, the last one, as we go through the actual unboxing. Um, now, even if this hadn't been voted for, I would have picked a fixed blade just to check out fixed blades, because their fixed blades are among their highest priced. So in the fixed blade box, we also have the dog tag. Um, Got our sheath, and then we've got our actual blade. All right. Now the steel on all of these is 8CR13 MOV. 8CR13 is is close. It's a uh, Chinese approximation of OS8. OS8 is not a bad steel. Um, cryo treated OS8, I, I prefer better than heat treated OS8 but when done right, it can be a pretty good steal. Reminds me a little bit, just a little bit of the Benchmade Nimravis. Back to the specs here first. Um, so full tang, all the way down. Um, you've got G10 scales that are you know, obviously affixed, mechanically fixed to the knife. Um, and you've got this 550 cord wrap on it, which is, is nice, it's comfortable, but obviously, you know, if you look, you can use this knife without the wrap on it. I'm not a fan of how much dangle comes in this, but with this much 550 cord, you could unwind this. You could make yourself uh, a lanyard for your wrist if you're going to be using this for you know chopping or whatever. 
The other option, which I think was the, the Killer Whale, um, was a full flat grind blade. I like this though. It's almost got a little bit of a sponto shape to it. Um, and I believe, I'm trying to see, yeah, a little bit of a hollow grind to it, which is, you know, I really like that as a slicing blade. Look how thick the spine of that blade is. That's a really nice, big, thick piece of steel. And we are going to hard use test this knife in another video, separate from just this unboxing and mini review. Let's take out the sheath and check that out. It cuts plastic. We're doing good so far. Kydex sheath. Oh, looks like you got one big belt loop and a snap strap. It holds pretty securely, even without the strap attached. Um, I still would like to get my hands on the killer whale just to uh, check out that full flat ground blade though. Easy to pop that out though. Hold secure. Not bad. So these are the four Skiff Knives USA knives we're going to be looking at. The first four, we might look at some others. Uh, there are some other designs that I'd really like to take a look at. Now, I want to do a hard use test, at least on this one. I want to check out one of the folders, too. And you know what? The truth is I'd like to do the hard use test on their, their least expensive one. Um... I'd like to do the hard use test on this guy right here to see what it can handle. Because they're all the same steel and they should all be made the same way. Why this guy is uh, less money than the other two, I don't know. Um, I like these, I do, but I really, since this is the least expensive one they have, I want to put it through its paces. And definitely, you know, fixed blades are made for hard use tests. Let's take a look at the lockup. And then this right here, they look pretty solid. What do you guys think? Have you seen any lock travel? I don't think so. No stickiness. Uh, returns to true center. And now I'm going to have to go over the video to really tell if there was any kind of lock travel going on. Uh, still a little rough when you close it up getting that detent past the blade again. But... Test this guy out. No stickiness. This one is super smooth. I mean, really smooth. No, nope, can't use that. Um, if I had to pick a favorite right now, just in terms of mechanics, it would definitely be this guy right here. Finished excellently. I mean, that was kind of my fault right there, but let's try the recurve section too. It's like nothing. I mean, cutting through nothing. When you actually try to cut with the blade instead of the choil, it works great. All right, this feels perfect. You know what? And since we have them out here, we'll go ahead. We'll do the, we'll do the, you know, main blade tests right now. Oh, that doesn't bode well. Huh. So we've got some little issues right around curve there. There we go. Look at that. Not feeling too thrilled. I don't know what's what's up with this. Alright, so. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And then this little dude here. Just as well finished as the other guys. And again, cheapest one on the website. I'm I'm really just sort of what is going on with this blade right here? Uh, I, I don't I don't know the other ones 
We're great. I wish I had the killer whale right now just to check it out. It seems like there's a small burr somewhere along there that just doesn't want to cut very well. And that means that before we do our hard use test, I need to put a razor's edge on that knife. All right, let's see. Let's do a pull through. Pretty damn good, honestly. Felt good. Let's try it again. I wasn't even looping for like, you know, to hold that with really good tension. That was just, it just flies through. Awesome. Um, while we've got this one, let's just do our slice. I, you can't even feel it slice. It just, it, it doesn't even move. Um, awesome. Push right through the cord. Finished beautifully. I have to say, the knives are, I mean, so far, except for the one, which, you know, we only have one of those. I can't tell if that's the way they all are, just that one, but finished beautifully. So, first we've got to test the one part of the blade. And now we're going to test the recurve section of the blade. Okay. A um, little bit more force, but still a beautiful pull through on that. And slice like you're pulling through. I mean, We're just cutting right through stuff here. Uh, oops, we lost a little piece there, but okay. And very well finished out of the factory, like right out of the box. If you were to, let's say you're going off on your little wilderness trip, camping trip, use it in a workshop, whatever, take them right out of the box and you're ready to put them to use. It's, it doesn't look like it's chopping because the pieces aren't flying away because they're getting embedded straight into the wood here. But there you go. And Now, I'm going to save this for the real hard use challenge. And I hope everybody knows that by pointing out some of the things that I found a little troublesome, I mean no disrespect to uh, Matt, Demo Ranch, or anything. Those guys are awesome. One day, I only hope my channel can be like theirs. But, I think it's important to highlight some of that stuff. Wow. Man, right through this stuff. Okay, how old is this stick? Um, and yeah, this is small, because I'm just doing a little bit here, but... Somebody want to start a fire? All right. Now this with the, you know, with the recurve in the blade, it has its uses. I think this, unless you're, you know, when you're cutting a bunch of rope or stuff that really needs a slicing power, that's one thing. I think this does have more of a coolness factor. I think this is more of a practical blade, but um, it definitely does look really cool. And in a scenario like this, you can really get that recurve cutting power going on. Um, recurves, are great when you need the extra physical blade length to cut. Yes, Ethan. Hi, you're here? Do you want to try? Yeah. Maybe soon, buddy. Aww. Maybe I can help you after the video, okay? You and me can learn. You want to learn? You want to learn how to do some big guy stuff? Ethan, no poop on the video. Well, There's no poop. Can I walk? Yeah, it's just mud. It's not poop. There's no poop. No, it's just mud. Poop? It's not poop, it's just mud. It's just mud, I promise. Hi. 
here. You're here? Yep. Want to say hi to everybody on the camera? Hi, sis. He's very nice. Now? You definitely have the potential to do some, some good actual work with this stuff, not just EDC, <clears throat> not just carrying. Um, you know, I can't speak to how long the edge holds or the hardness or the way they heat treat or anything, but so far, I mean, it's given us signs that it's made pretty well, good quality. Um, the Skiff itself, the Skiff company in Ukraine has been around for a while. They're not a brand new operation. They know how to do stuff. When I ordered these, I, I honestly, you know what? I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. Um, I, straight up. Um, I, I knew from looking I was going to have a little bit to say about the stuff we discussed in the beginning. Uh, I love Demolition Ranch. I watch it all the time. I'm jealous of that channel. I look up to that channel. I was super impressed when Off the Ranch put out the initial apology video regarding the pricing and some of that stuff. Um, I even commented on it. I think it's awesome that they put their name to something and they chose something that's not just, um, you know, a rehashing of a bunch of commonly made in China knives. Now, I can't wait to do the full on hard use test. And I mean, we are going to do hard use. My standard hard use test that we normally do, and maybe a little bit more, um, just to see what we've got. But, you know, the very basics that we put these through today, just to sort of represent some standard EDC tasks, maybe a little bit out in the woods tasks. Um, just, just some, like I said, little basics. I really like the fit and finish. Uh, I really do like the designs, very comfortable, weight is great. What I think would be an awesome next step for these dudes is if they introduce maybe more of what Skiff has, the original Skiff lineup, um, brought that over, <clears throat> you know, to this part of the world, or maybe even took some of these designs I have now, maybe redid them in some real premium type stuff, uh, titanium frames, like real high quality steels, you know, maybe S35VN, some M390, or maybe give us some really cool high carbon stuff. You know, some M4 blades. Um, work with my favorite carbon steel, the uh, 80CRV2 stuff. That, that is like indestructible, but um, awesome, awesome first offering from Skiff USA. I really like them, I, I really do. And not just cause they're from Demo Ranch. I mean, could have put any names on these knives and I would have pointed out the same things I did but also giving them the same kind of, uh, hey, good job. Nice knives. So, hope you guys will join me when we do the hard use test for these guys coming up real soon. But now I'd like to hear all of your thoughts uh, about what we saw with these blades. So, comments, folks. All right, real quick, the uh, I just got an email um, yesterday, in fact, that Ravencrest finally has the January Raven Pack knives boxing and shipping and should be here, you know, hopefully by the time they ship the February knives anyway. Barrel and blades on the way. Prep box by PMP should be going soon and, you know, battle box whenever they do it, so. Also have some cool stuff on the way from Mass Drop and got a bunch of other stuff sitting upstairs in my gear corner, just waiting. Uh, flashlights, you guys have been asking for some more flashlights. I've got flashlights for you, so. Not to mention some more cool in the shop stuff and a sweet AR refurbishing project that I've done in the shop at Patriot Armory. So, hope you guys can look forward to that and be excited. Maybe Demo Ranch can tell me what I've done wrong on that one. Thank you to everybody that voted to help pick out which one of these uh, skiff knives we're gonna look at. I'm sorry I couldn't do the, the Lunker. Uh, it just, it was sold out and I didn't want to delay this video anymore, so I wanted to get the order in, but uh, we'll look at it as soon as we can. All right, guys, as always, remember, you guys are all absolutely awesome. Couldn't do this channel without you. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.